NSERC is acting on the evidence that equity, diversity, and inclusion strengthen the scientific and engineering community and the quality, social relevance, and impact of research. By requiring all researchers to be aware of barriers to EDI which exist in their immediate day-to-day -day work environment, all researchers will be able to identify and implement specific actions that increase equity and inclusion and collectively make a significant impact across the NSE. Opportunities to include equity, diversity, and inclusion considerations are integrated throughout the DG application. The following are selected elements from each evaluation criterion, which we will later discuss in more detail. For excellence of the researcher, past contributions to increasing EDI in the research enterprise are reflected in the excellence of the researcher rating if you participated in this way. The extent to which your work promoted the inclusion and advancement of underrepresented groups in research is part of the importance of contributions to and use by other researchers and end users. For merit of the proposal, you are expected to describe how you consider sex, gender, and diversity in the research design when applicable to your field of research. This includes ensuring your rationale and methodology for including sex, gender, and diversity in the research design are clearly described, and that aspects of sex, such as biological factors, gender, such as sociocultural factors, and diversity are addressed in your research design, making it more ethically sound, rigorous, and useful. In proposed research which doesn't study living systems, doesn't interact with living systems, doesn't have end users which are living, etc., this may not apply. The onus is on the applicant to address the relevant aspects of MMOP in order that members may assess their proposed program of research. For contributions to the training of the HQP, consideration of EDI in future approaches to training is required for all DG applicants. You must describe the challenges or barriers to equity and inclusion in your current research and training environment. Barriers to participation can be physical, procedural, visible, invisible, unintentional, or intentional, and vary depending on the context of the program of research. Then you must describe your planned approach, including the specific actions you have chosen to increase equity and inclusion in your recruitment practices, mentorship approaches, and initiatives aimed at ensuring an inclusive research and training environment as part of the training philosophy. It is valuable to build on EDI resources that are available to you through your institution, department, or fields of research, but remember that your planned approach to training must be tailored to the context and training environment of your group. Similarly, you are asked to describe past EDI challenges or barriers in your training environment and the specific actions you implemented in the past in support of EDI. This is incorporated into the assessment of past contributions to training HQP if you participated in this way. The following series of slides review each evaluation criterion in detail. The excellence of the researcher assessment is based on achievements in the past act of six years of research. So for the 2022 competition, it would be from January 2015 to now, rather than those in the distant past. It is important to highlight the quality and impact of the achievements in your proposal. Members will only evaluate contributions in the natural sciences and engineering domain. Your achievements will be assessed using information from the most significant contributions section of the application, the samples of research contributions attachments, the additional information on contributions section of the application, and the CCV. Please keep in mind that the samples of research contributions attached must be from within the last act of six years of research. Additional information on contributions could include your choice of venue, the order of authors, or any other pertinent information. If you had an eligible leave during the last six years, you are entitled to an attachment, the leave of absence attachment, to list supplemental contributions to research prior to the last six years for a duration equivalent to the leave. In the most significant contributions, you should discuss your five most significant research contributions, making sure to highlight the quality and impact. 
If you have a contribution from earlier that has significant impact within the last act of six years of research, such as the exploitation of a patent, you should present the information in this section. A contribution does not have to be a single publication or report. For example, a group of publications on a specific subject could be discussed as one contribution. For each contribution, describe its impact and significance to and use by other researchers and end users. For collaborative contributions, describe your role. Impact can be seen as, but is not limited to, advancing knowledge, developing technology, addressing socioeconomic or environmental needs, or contributing to increased equity, diversity, and inclusion in research. When the evaluation group is evaluating the excellence of the researcher, the main sections of the CCD that they will use are recognitions, such as honors, prizes, and awards, activities, such as international collaborations, event administration, editorial activities, organizational review, knowledge and technology transfers, etc. Memberships, such as service on committees, and contributions, such as publications, books, and patents. Moving on to the merit of the proposal, the evaluation group assesses the application based on the following elements. Originality and innovation, significance and expected contributions to NSE research, clarity, scope of objectives, and appropriateness of methodology, feasibility, consideration of sex, gender, and diversity in the research design, if applicable to the field of research, appropriateness and justification for the budget, relationship to other research support. Note the list is not exhaustive. It is important to clearly present all of the information. The evaluation group members use the following elements of the application to assess the points mentioned in the previous slide. The research proposal, five pages, along with up to two pages of references, proposed expenditures and budget justification, and relationship to other research support, which includes a 12,000 character text box in the research portal, as well as CIHR and or shark summary and budget pages, if applicable, and your CCV research funding history. We'll go into a bit more detail about this topic in the next few slides. For all grants from CIHR and SHRC, applicants must demonstrate that the discovery grant proposal is distinct conceptually from research support held or applied for through CIHR and or SHRC. Simply stating that there is no overlap with the current application is an insufficient justification. You must clearly explain how the proposed ideas, objectives, and expenditures of the discovery grant application are entirely distinct from those supported or submitted for support through CIHR and or SHRC, and how the anticipated contributions to research resulting from the proposed discovery grant will be distinct from the ones resulting from CIHR and or SHRC support. The onus is on you as the applicant to provide sufficient information for the evaluation group to determine that you have met these requirements. You must attach the scanned summary and budget pages from any SHRC and CIHR funding held or applied for. Failure to clearly demonstrate that the research is distinct from that held or applied for through SHRC and CIHR warrants a rating of insufficient for the merit of the proposal criterion. This applies to DG applicants who receive funds or plan to receive funds from CIHR or SHRC, regardless of their role on the grant. Applicants to the Discovery Grant Program can receive research support from sources other than CIHR and SHRC for the same research ideas and objectives, as long as it is used to cover different expenses. For funding that has been applied for, you must indicate that there will be no duplication for the same expenses and also indicate that no duplication of funds would occur if all applications are successful. Failure to meet these requirements warrants a rating of insufficient for the merit of the proposal, or the application may be rejected. Other sources of research support include grants and contributions, held and applied for, from federal and provincial funding agencies, non-governmental organizations, the private sector, 
universities, example, institution startup funds, the primary place of employment for adjunct professors employed outside of academia, and or others. This table sums up what was explained in the past three slides. It outlines what is allowed or required in terms of ideas and expenses, depending on the source of support. Note that the evaluation of other sources of support is limited to research funding that will be or may become active within the funding period of the proposed discovery grant. This applies to funds that support research activities, for example, research grants and the research portion of a CERC or CRC, excluding the salary portion. Here are some final tips based on the common mistakes in the relationship to other research support section we see from year to year. Ensure that CCV amounts and application information match and that nothing is missing from either. Be sure to clearly explain your role in any joint funding. If you have funding under review, be sure to list it in your CCV, but also explain that it is still under review. Your planned expenses need to be explained, and for CIHR and SHRC plans, it needs to be clear that they are distinct and there is no overlap. Be sure to attach the budget and summary pages from any SHRC and CIHR funding held or applied for. The Discovery Grant Program is intended to support research in the Natural Sciences and Engineering, or NSE. Interdisciplinary research that is predominantly in the NSE is also supported, provided that the significance, impact, and advancement of knowledge or practical applications in the NSE are demonstrated. The primary objective of any research supported by NSERC must be to advance knowledge and training in the NSE. Please consult the science.gc.ca website on guidelines for selecting the appropriate federal granting agency the first link on this slide, if your research might fall within the social sciences and humanities or in the health sciences domain. You should also check the addendum to the guidelines for the eligibility of applications related to health, the second link, if your research straddles the boundaries between health and NSE research. The addendum provides concrete examples that will help you understand what kind of health research NSERC supports as well as guidance on how to frame your research in your proposal. The same proposal cannot be submitted to two federal granting agencies and applications which are not appropriate for NSERC's mandate will be rejected. Applications submitted to the Discovery Grants Program are reviewed for subject matter eligibility or SME at multiple stages. The first review is at the NOI stage and is based on the description of the proposed research. These reviews are conducted by staff and evaluation group members. If an application is flagged for concerns related to subject matter eligibility at the NOI stage, a letter is sent to applicants from NSERC reminding them to consider the guidelines that are linked on this slide. This letter reminds applicants of NSERC's mandate and provides them with the opportunity to review their full application to ensure that the program of research they are proposing fits within NSERC's mandate. If you receive an SME letter from NSERC, it doesn't mean that your research isn't appropriate for NSERC, but rather it's a heads up to help you in preparing your full application. Usually, it means that based on information that you provided in your NOI, it appears that your research has either health or social science implications in addition to the NSE. Final decisions on subject matter eligibility are made after the full application is received. While these decisions can occur at any stage of the peer review process, as late as February, we try to identify applications with mandate concerns as early as possible in the process. This slide covers other tips regarding the merit of the proposal that we have received from past evaluation group members and successful past applicants. You want to keep in mind that both experts in your field and those a bit further removed may evaluate your application. This is why we always recommend having non-experts review your application prior to submission. Provide a progress report on related research. 
be sure to position your research within the field and the state of the art. When writing the proposal, ensure that you have clearly articulated your short and long-term objectives and an appropriately detailed methodology. Your budget should be realistic and conform to university guidelines. Your RGO can be helpful with this part. If you have received comments on past applications, make sure to incorporate those suggestions and recommendations into your new application. Have your HQP well integrated into the proposal. And finally, make sure that you follow all research portal presentation and attachment standards, as well as our DG instructions.